morning. Um, give it a minute more until people have settled. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Welcome, yeah, I said it already, welcome. Um, apparently it's about drill, right? It's about large-scale interactive query processing and show you uh, a use case and technical background and my main goal is really to increase the number of contributors uh, within Apache Drill. Right? If I get you there, if you say, oh, I really want to contribute in terms of code, use cases, documentation, whatever, then I consider myself being successful. Who of you knows XKCD commit? Some of you? Okay. Um, if you haven't known it yet, now you know. Um, just a kind of introduction. So my name is Michael Hausenblatt. I work at Mapark Technologies as the chief data engineer in uh, Europe here. And I contribute to the Apache Drill um, incubator. And if you want to get in touch with me, I love to discuss and you know, bounce off ideas or whatever, share. Um, follow me on Twitter, at Hausenblatt, or write me an email at michael.hausenblatt at gmail.com. And uh, now with further ado, let's drill into topic and the pun <coughs> is indeed intended here. So if, uh, if you have a look at the workflows that you see in an enterprise, right, there are different ones, right? Batch processing, processing ETL style, MapReduce, TraceBase. You see things like Lightwise or not so Lightwise OSDP. And we have PageBase and Cassandra in our tool belt that you can use there. We have stream processing <coughs> more and more. We have you know, constrained devices, sensors, mobile phones, and so on hammer out streams and we can process that. Storm is one very widely used uh, example of that or S4 incubating in Apache as well. Um, search, enterprise <coughs> search, solar and, and elastic search, they can be seen uh, without any more. Of course, that's uh, very necessary. But how about interactive ad hoc query at scale? What do we do use there? Do we have anything? Glad you asked. So interactive query at scale, what are the options today? So people use do that, uh, friendly to or for uh, business users. They can write their uh, SQL-like queries there. Um, however, the latency is probably not uh, that uh, good, right? At the end of the day, it's uh, compiled down to MapReduce jobs, and that takes you know, uh, minutes to hours <coughs> to execute. And if you're sitting in front of a Tableau, a data mirror, or an Excel, you don't have or don't want to wait 10 hours until you see the resource. Um, other things there, Aster or with a relation database, you always have to ETL stuff in and out uh, in order to do the interactivity then in, in the relational database with SQL, right? Now, what we want to, in order to drive these cases where you have a business user sitting in front of a BI tool, is low latency. What exactly low latency is, I'll come to that, but just to let you know, there are already some players in that field. Right. Apache Drill is not the only player. <coughs> However, all of those, uh, Coderas and Pala, Citus Data, HEDEP is already around a bit longer, um, have different approaches and are suitable for different uh, cases. Let's have a look at the concrete use case. Meet Jane. Jane is a marketing analyst, and she wants to target to figure out a user group for her next campaign. And let's assume she has data in different data sources. That's something uh, she looks at our customers, you know, does the, the pod around and, and ask. Uh, that quite often happens in, in enterprises, right? You might have, for example, the transaction information in an Oracle DB. You might have the user profiles in MongoDB. And you might have the access logs, the web quick logs in uh, AQS, right? So how can you integrate all of that? How can you query that? Um, quite often you don't really know what you're looking for, so you need to be explorative you need to be able to create ad hoc questions. So today's solution, coming back to that, if you're RDBMS centric, you would ETL the data from MongoDB and uh, Hadoop and do the interactive part uh, powered by the relational database. You're inherently uh, limited by what the relational database does there, but at least it, it serves the purpose for interactivity. If you're MapReduce focused, 
you can do the other way around, you can get the data from RDBMS uh, with proof or whatever, and MongoDB can uh, use the, for example, Hive, but again, the latency uh, won't really do that. It, it, it does it at scale, but it, it doesn't address the, the low latency part, right? <coughs> and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, stop me or shout at me or whatever, throw at me, whatever you like, whatever you have. So looking at this use case and a number of other use cases, we derived a number of requirements we have that influence the design decision. So support for different data sources, different kinds of backends, that's very pivotal to us. Uh, so for support for different query interfaces, especially supporting enterprise standards like SQL uh, is pivotal. Well, of course, low latency, real time, that's, a, that's the core assumption that we want to, to uh, realize. And uh, ad hoc queries, as I said, you quite often don't know what you're looking for or the requirements are changing, the, the, uh, yeah, the conditions around uh, what you're doing there are changing. So you need to be able to create ad hoc queries. Of course, it has to be scalable and fast and reliable. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't probably be that much of use in an enterprise setup. Now, who of you has heard about or knows Google Dremel? Um, I do a quick uh, review there so that we are familiar with certain terms. It doesn't, doesn't hurt, I believe. So the two main innovations that Google, when they published this paper in 2010, um, introduced there were essentially around this um, column-oriented record um, assembly and, and, and representation. And the other part was about this multi-level uh, serving tree. So that means you have a root, that uh, takes the query from a client and pushes down the query over several layers. Um, and the, the queries are then executed against the data in situ, uh, maximizing the data locality, and then you aggregate the results together again uh, and serve it back to the user. So these are the two main innovations that were introduced back then. And they provide from that paper in the lower left corner, they provide, um, this is an academic paper, so you need to have an evaluation, so you need to show here's the data and here's the query and that's the, the nice graphs here. Uh, on the far left, uh, you see the normal MapReduce uh, record somewhere in the upper thousand execution time on, as you can see, terabytes, slower, slower terabytes and, and billions and trillions of, triples, uh, of, of records there. Uh, then they implemented purely the, the column-oriented um, representation for MapReduce and already achieved quite some gain there, right? It goes down, that's logarithmic, so 10x or whatever. And using Dremel, uh, using this uh, multi-level uh, query uh, tree, um, they got it down to, well, what, 10 seconds or whatever, so 100x or whatever, right? So that's quite impressive. The other uh, experiment they did, there's many more, but what's relevant for us now is they looked at how many levels does it make sense to introduce there? You would probably assume that if you add 10 levels, then it's 10 times faster, whatever. That's not the case. It seems like that uh, yeah, the gain with three levels is already fine. So you, you don't really need more than, than two uh, uh, or three levels in total, put it that way. So that, that's the, the bits you should somehow keep in mind uh, for the coming discussions because uh, they will put me into one or the other uh, vocabulary from here. Right. So general overview of uh, what is drill and, and what are we doing there. Uh, obviously, it's inspired by Google Dremel uh, work. That's not the only one, and Impala and others are as well inspired by that. However, in Apache Drill, we really want to provide full SQL 2003 support, right? That's one of the requirements, let's come back to that, um, that really comes from customers, from people that uh, work with CI tools, uh, use CI tools to, to seek uh, SQL, and we need to be able to support that. However, other query languages on the surface, like Mongo query language or a domain specific query language, it should also be possible, right? You should be able, if you think back of the requirements of different data sources, to plug your data source in there. So if you have the MongoDB, relational database, HTFS, HBase, whatever, you should be able to plug that in. And the framework should be extensible in that sense. So you have a new data, you know, every two weeks or so roughly, a new, a new SQL database comes up, so you want to be able to uh, adapt that. If, if you have uh, defined API 
API there, which you write a tenor for the data source and plug it to the query. Uh, nested data is really uh, treated as a first class citizen, so we support that directly. The schema is optional. If it's there, great, you can benefit from that. If not, it will be discovered. <coughs> and last but not least, well, it's an Apache project, so it's community driven, right? It's not about two or three people deciding things, it's about you at the end of the day. And already now, just to come back to this, what do we mean with low latency or, or real time? So there is a, an entire range, uh, depending on the data size and so on, <coughs> that's batch oriented, right? That's uh, where MapReduce is really sharp. And then there is a, a range, we're not talking about this low milliseconds, whatever, but depending on the, on the data size, seconds to minutes, right? If you have petabytes of data, you probably can't expect uh, a second. But uh, for the use cases, uh, we envision that uh, you typically have these uh, data sizes, terabytes, whatever, and then you can expect seconds, right? So that's, for many applications, already good enough. Right, so let's have a look at uh, a very high level view on the architecture of Germ. On the bottom, you see, as already mentioned, pluggable data sources. So these are some of them where we've already seen from the community interest, people said, oh, I want to do that, or I have a use for that, or whatever. Uh, and they, again, they are pluggable, right? If you have a new data source, a new kind of SQL database, a NoSQL database, you should be able to just plug that in. The design should allow that. Then the core bits, I'm coming to that in, in greater detail in a minute, and then on the upper layer, on the user land, on the user land, you have the interfaces you would expect from what you have in, in page base and, and whatnot else, uh, a REST interface, a command line interface, um, a native API, Java in this in, in, in drill uh, context again, um, and the JDBC ODBC interface for directly interacting with uh, the BI tool. Right. Now let's uh, have a closer look at that. One of these worker nodes, and uh, in fact, it is a, a rather um, symmetrical system, so there are no master and slaves in that sense uh, up front. It's called the drill bit. And that drill bit, the, the goal here is really to maximize the data locality. You want to preserve the data where it lives, right? You don't want to transfer data over the network. Um, everything else, the coordination, the query planning, the optimization, the execution, and so on, are distributed, right? What runs there as a daemon on one node is a drill bit, <coughs> right? And by default, uh, all of these drill bits hold all the, the roles, but of course you can configure that and, and optimize that. And one thing to note, if you think back of what we've seen with, uh, on the slide where we introduced Google Gremlin, uh, this root node, any of the drill bits there can act as this root node, right? Can act, can take a, a query from, from a client. Right? That's important to, to note. So the overall setup you have there per node, you have a drill bit and you have the storage engine. The storage engine could be something simple as a JSON document or a log file, or it could be page base or whatever. Okay, so far any questions? Right, so we, um, and I come back to that later, the, the ongoing discussion, uh, use, or will use Zookeeper uh, for the dynamic uh, cluster membership information. And the distributed cache, Pacer Cache, uh, seems to be a candidate for the metadata, the locality information, and so on and so forth. And so when a query comes in, and as I said, any of these drill bits can, can uh, act as an endpoint for the query, that originating drill bit acts as a kind of format, right? Manages the query execution, the scheduling, and uh, yeah, preserving the locality information. Uh, the big thing that is really, if you think back to how MapReduce is imp implemented, and where all the latency is coming, you write to this, you read from this. You write to this, you read from this. And that's something we want to avoid there. And per design, we say the communication <coughs> between the drill bits is streamed in memory, right? We want to avoid as much as possible serialization and duplication. If you take that one as the originating one, this one would be for this query, for this job, would be uh, the, the, the format and would coordinate the others, and the others would be treat and um, yeah, receive the query, execute part of that, and report back again to this uh, originating node. Okay. 
Now let's have a deeper look into the query execution on the principles level. Right? So far we've seen more the operational level. Um, what happens is a source query comes in that might be, you know, SQL 2003. That might come from a BI tool automatically generated. That might be a domain specific language. Ruby, Python, Scala, all of them allow you to uh, nicely express domain specific languages. It doesn't really matter what the originating query or what that is, how that is represented. You just get that in and have a parser there that essentially parses that originating query, needs to understand that query language and generates a logical plan. And that logical plan, uh, you can see it here, I'm not sure how well you can see it, has a JSON serialization. That's just for debugging, right? If you want to see what's going on there, of course it lives in memory and is communicated in memory. Essentially what that logical plan does, it has operators, it defines what the data sources are and uh, I'm, I'm going to show an example later on, uh, has these operators, a filter, an aggregate, and so on and so forth, right? And for now, uh, of course you can uh, write these logical plans by hand, right? If you uh, are savvy and can uh, write the JSON, then you can write these logical plans by hand. You can ingest them by hand as well if you want. Then comes the optimizer that takes that logical plan and depending on the network topology and the overall structure of the cluster, it introduces things like parallelization, right? If I run drill on a single node, which is perfectly fine, you can do that. Uh, the demo actually does that. Uh, then the optimizer probably doesn't have a big role to just translate <coughs> the logical plan more or less one to one to a physical plan. However, and that's what, what we envision there, that's the idea, if you have thousands of servers, then you need to know how the data is distributed and so on, and the logical plan and the physical plan will certainly differ a lot physical plan then actually says how that is uh, really executed and the scanner API then allows to push down the query to the relevant uh, storage backend. Right. Any questions regarding this query execution? Right, so the different uh, things that if you could open up such a drill bit, what you could see there, and if you remember early on I said you can deactivate each of these, these parts there, is essentially a set of parsers, depending on, on the query language or interface language, you might not need all of them or, or only some. Um, you have the logical plan, the optimizer, and the physical plan, and things like the scheduler format and operators, and the storage en engine interface, um, for example, yeah, DFS engine, HDFS, for example, and the HBase engine there. And then you have the RPC endpoint in order to communicate with other drill bits and a distributed cache for the metadata that is used in a shared mode data cluster, but that's for the time being at least discussed. Now let's have a closer look at the key features of drill. There are these four most important ones, so I'm gonna focus on these four. Full SQL 2003 compatibility tools. You really want to make sure that your BI tools you have out there or your customers might have out there directly are usable with drill, right? So for that you need to uh, support SQL 2003. And uh, this then nicely integrates with the existing tools you find out uh, there in the wild, whatever you have, Datomir, Tableau, Excel, <coughs> SAP, SAP Crystal Reports, whatever. And you can use standard ODPC, TLPC drivers. You're not uh, dependent on that. <coughs> nested data. Uh, as I said, we treat nested data as a first class citizen, right? So there are more and more formats and systems that use nested data such as JSON, JSON, we know that from MongoDB for example. XML is still around. Um, in the Hadoop uh, ecosystem you have things like protobuffer, uh, Avro, Drift and so on. And uh, yeah, as I said, some of these data port, uh, sources, sorry. Yes. On what? Standard ODPC, TDPC drivers there. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. I would assume so. Yeah. I, I think that's one part we have not yet discussed that deeply. But if you have something there, I would encourage you to, you know, join the mailing list and and uh, raise that issue. Saying, okay. How exactly does that work? Ted has, I'm glad Ted is around. Ted has a, a strong
strong view on that. Great to have you on board. Right. So we know that the flattening of, of the nested data is, is inherently error prone. So you don't want that. You, you want that uh, to be done automatically. And from a technical point of view, it would just be an extension to, to SQL, right? So you would have a superset that would be able to express this kind of construct in, in order to address the nested tree thing. Right. Then we said option, optional schema. So many of the data sources out there, they don't have a rigid schema. And that can be, on the one hand, if you think about the relational world, the uh, schema changes or evolves over time because of business requirements, new use cases, or whatever. You have to deal with that. And in some cases, if you think of page base, you have different, potentially different schemes on each of the rows, on each of the records, right? So you have to be flexible regarding that. You want to support queries against unknown schema. However, if the schema is provided by the user, <coughs> like as is the case in, in Hive, for example, uh, then you want to benefit from that. Otherwise, Jewel will discover that. Okay. Down there, you just have an, an example of an H base uh, through H base records that simply uh, that, that uh, illustrate that with the fact that uh, the, the schema can even change between different records. Right. One of the things that I personally find extremely interesting and also sets us apart from any other players we have in that field are the extensibility points. And that's something that makes Drill so powerful that you can extend, adapt, change things on all of these levels. Have uh, a different query language and use DSL, quite often data scientists have these requirements. Fine, you write a new uh, scanner for the, uh, parser for that uh, against the parser API and Drill can work with that. Uh, you want custom operators. I believe uh, Ted did that already for k-means, right? If I remember correctly, he already implemented a custom operator. No? no? Or you, right. Uh, so that's possible. You can uh, do uh, the user-defined function, as we know from, from Hive, for example, in the logical plan. Uh, you can provide your own optimizer there if you want. Not sure how many people that will do, but it's possible. Um, and as I said, again, the data sources, whenever a new data source should be integrated, just write a, a scanner in the scan using the scanner API and drill can query it and integrate it in the query, right? So these extensibility points per design um, are very important to drill. I would even say essential. The other thing, the other question there was, okay, and how does that compare to Hadoop? Is that a Hadoop killer or what? No, right? It is complementary. As we know, Hadoop has these two parts, HDFS and MapReduce, and HDFS, as already pointed out earlier, can be used as one of the data sources. And if you think about that, this is really Dremel and, and with it uh, Drill as well, read-only data. You have it there, and then you do your query. So if you have your data already sitting in HDFS, you should be able to use that directly, right? So in that sense, it's, it's uh, directly usable. However, there are a set of complementary use cases, and I, because I'm lazy, I just reuse the stuff that the uh, nice, uh, Google Cloud team put together in the BigQuery uh, white paper. BigQuery, if you don't know it, is uh, Google's public offering of the Dremel system. So you can go there, um, put your stuff in Google Storage, which is the equivalent to uh, S3, and that can be used from BigQuery as, as the, the input, and then you can do your queries there in a cloud feature, uh, cloud, cloud setup. And uh, they have provided these uh, different examples, and I would advise you to have a look at that uh, white paper. It's certainly well written. So you would use Apache Drill and Hadoop MapReduce probably in a rather complementary way. You would do some uh, ad hoc queries with Apache Drill and then would write, uh, would use that, for example, uh, to, to write a MapReduce job in Hive, for example. Uh, so Drill access really if you have, uh, if you want to find a certain record with very specific <coughs> conditions, right? Or an aggregation under dynamic uh, conditions if you want to do that. And MapReduce you probably would or you would not use Apache Drill for things like data mining, uh, PL, things like that. That's where MapReduce-based uh, systems, batch-oriented uh, systems, uh, still have and, and will have uh, their, their um, area of, of, of 
application. And uh, our goal is not to replace that, it's really to complement that, right? Let's have a look at the concrete example now. <laughs> this is actually available, and I have the, the link here, you can directly use that and, and uh, try it out yourself. Imagine you have a data source, which in this case, is just a simple JSON document on your local file system. And that contains um, information about different uh, donuts, uh, how they, what, what toppings they have, and how many uh, units have been sold, and what not else. And um, you have a logical plan there that we wrote by hand uh, so far. Initially, uh, there were no, um, no parsers available. Uh, so you, you had to write that uh, logical plan by hand, but it's JSON, it's rather straightforward to, to understand what's happening there. Um, so you define the operator there, you define the data source there, and then, uh, for example, in, in one case, it's a filter, uh, donuts.ttu, if you look up there, everything where it's below two uh, should be filtered. And if you run this through Apache Drill, what you get is this uh, out.json that essentially uh, yeah, uh, has the aggregations and filters as defined in a logical plan. Pretty straightforward and takes you probably five minutes depending on how fast your internet connection is to allow Maven to download half of the internet. But uh, essentially, once you have it uh, locally there, it, it, it runs immediately. So what's the status? Currently, a number of, of um, uh, organizations uh, develop uh, code and, and documentation around that. We have the logical plan. There's a document there that describes that in detail, which is uh, somehow the, the, the heart of, of uh, Apache Drill. We have the reference interpreter that allows you to do this demo here, uh, a, a basic SQL parser, um, and a basic demo that uh, allows you to test it uh, under with, with different uh, operators and source expressions. As we speak, March, April, uh, the plan is to have a larger coverage in the, in the SQL center. Uh, the physical plan in memory uh, communication so that we have that distributed setup and uh, a storage engine implementation looks like HBase is, is currently uh, under development and, and will be available rather soon. Now, uh, the question, so if you are excited as excited as I am and wonder where do I start, how do I start? Well, uh, there are a number of things that are discussed in the mailing list uh, around the uh, format we, we should use, uh, Twitter recently interviewed Parquet and Hype uh, uses uh, or will use, will, will, will soon uh, support the ORC files. Um, and the idea there is not to reinvent the wheel and introduce a third format, but to reuse one of the two existing there. Question is integration with the Hive Metastore. Um, to what extent that will be done? And again, if there are Hive committers, I don't know, are there any committers, uh, Apache committers around here? Hive, PageBase, whatever? Um, that's certainly something I'd also be interested in talking with people, what we can do there. And then I just came up with a number of, of uh, issues I found uh, interesting because they're currently heavily discussed. Things like uh, the storage engine uh, interface, page base, uh, the RPC interface for query submission, um, the cluster setup where we uh, have Zookeeper for the, the coordination, providing the low-level primitives, and on top of that, Apache Helix. Um, and again, that's something under discussion currently, but it looks like, yeah. I think that that's a wider discussion. I probably looking at the time, uh, if, if we can do that offline, I would appreciate it. I would really love to have that in detail. Okay, is that fine with you? Great. Um, yeah, and the further schedule, as I said, in uh, Q2, uh, the alpha is expected and uh, in Q3, the beta version is expected, right? So that's roughly where we are and wh where we are going. Quickly shout out to people who uh, yeah, provided code and, and whatnot else here. A number of people from different uh, organizations and companies, as I already said. <coughs> and that's, again, coming back to what I said initially, that's where I measure myself. Did I, did I do a good job here? If I can make you guys signing up, starting to contribute and the, the main thing there is really don't worry about code in the first case, right? You, you don't need to be a, a Java programmer or whatever in order to contribute. If you have use cases, queries, whatever, right? Sign up there, sign up with the user. If, you, if you're not uh, planning to develop or at the dev list, if you're more of a coder, 
sign up, uh, let us know, start the discussion, uh, come up with, with Shira issues, log something, uh, or directly contribute code, why not? Uh, at drilluser.org, uh, we try to keep up with the developments and, and uh, document where, where events are and, and user meetings and so on. And last but not least, this talk, the slides of, of this talk will be available under this uh, URI down there, Chum Hadoop Summit 2013 Pace Apache Drill, hopefully very soon. Okay, that remains some eight minutes for questions. Thanks a lot so far, and I would look forward to questions. This is an ongoing effort, uh, partially hidden under one of these uh, or two of these uh, Jira issues. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Ted, but uh, I would say this is not yet very well defined. Is that fair to say? Again, um, if you have concrete input or suggestions or whatever, the, the community group would certainly uh, appreciate that. Right. Other questions? Any other things you might want to know? Okay. If not to be the case, then again, thank you for your time. <laughs>